Has this ever happened to you? You're inside of Kittle, you're working away on a design, and you struggle with how to space things. You're like, is this exactly aligned properly? Is there an easier way to make sure that these are consistently spaced out? Well, there is. In this video, I'm gonna share with you some tips on how you can space out your designs and make them look absolutely perfect. Let's jump in. If you're new to Kittle, today's your lucky day. There's a ton of great designs and templates on Kittle that you can use for print on demand. And there's some really cool features inside of Kittle too. Right? If I go to the top, you can see there's all these different features up here. In this video, I'm gonna be covering spacing today. And the first thing I wanna show you is how to turn the grid on inside of Kittle. It's pretty easy to do. There's a little gear icon up on the top right. And when I click on it, and then I go down here to the bottom, there's a show grid option. It's pretty basic. It's just a white grid if you have a dark background. And if I make the background light, you'll see the grid then turns a little bit more gray. So it's pretty nice. You can turn that on. Again, to turn it off, just go up to the gear icon, down to the bottom, and then you can just simply turn it off. So an example of when you would use the grid, I'm just gonna delete out these couple items and I'm gonna leave in the boxes here. I'm actually just gonna have one red box to start. I'm gonna turn on the grid and then I'm gonna use the grid now for my box. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that it's aligned to say the top left of the design here. I'm gonna simply make it the right size. So I've got it five wide by five tall. And then I can just simply do Control C and Control V. That copies and pastes it. And then I can move it over one grid or two grids if I want. And we can see there it's perfectly spaced. The other thing you can do is hold down the Alt key and that just also copies over. So very quickly, I can make sure that my items are all perfectly spaced using the grid. Okay, so I've got them all now spaced. Now here's a second tip, is you can group items and you can center them. So what I'm gonna do now is do Control A and that's gonna highlight all the items. I'm actually gonna turn off the grid so you can see this a bit easier. You don't even need the grid for this. Now if I do center, so I'm gonna highlight them, and you can see there's an align button over here. If I align center, you're gonna see it's gonna move it all into one box, and that's not what I want. So I'm gonna do Control Z, and I've got them now, six boxes. What I wanna do now is make sure they're aligned vertically, and then I'm gonna right click inside the boxes, and I'm going to group them. Now it's as if it's one item. So now when I click center, it moves to the center. And I can make them a larger or smaller very easily. So the group function is really nice because you can make them one item and easily center them. Okay, for this third example, I'm going to use a shape as a straight edge. So I'm gonna go up here to elements and I'm going to pick a basic shape. Let's say I've got this square. I'm gonna make it nice and long and skinny and I'm gonna make the object color say red. So it's pretty easy to see. So what you can do now is, let's say you wanted to have them spaced out. You wanted to have multiple bars, but you wanted them spaced out, something like that. So I, I'm close, but they're not exact. How do I make sure these are exactly separated? Well, the answer is pretty simple. You can just add in another shape. So in this case, I'm gonna use a circle. I'm gonna make it just a different color so it's easy to see. And then I'm just gonna put the circle in here so that it's the exact size that I want spacing out in between the items. So I'm gonna move my left item over here, I'm gonna move my circle, and you'll see it's gonna pop up with this dotted line when it's touching. If I go too far one way or too far the other way, it won't pop up. But when I hover over it, exactly when it touches, you'll see there's a line. So now it's touching. I'm gonna to do the same thing now with this. I'm gonna move over and you'll see, oh, there's the line again. I'm not worried about the up and the down at this point. I'm just worried that it's got the line. Wonderful. Now I can simply control C and control V, copy and paste this over. And I'm just looking for that dotted line. There it is. Bring this down, dotted line. So here now I've got four red bars. That's what I want. I don't need these circles, so I'm gonna delete them out. They were only there for my spacing. I'll do control A, vertically center. And now I've got four bars that are exactly spaced apart the exact way that I want. A really popular way that you can space things out is through grid lines. So over on the left-hand side, I'm gonna to go to elements, I'm gonna type in the word grid, and as I scroll on down, you're gonna see a few different options come up. So there's a couple ways you could do it. One would be to do the dots. I'm gonna make the dots white. And then you can just simply make this now as big or as small as you want. So if you had other items, I'll go into elements, and I'll type in duck, for example. So let's say I wanted to have a bunch of ducks, and I wanted them to be perfectly spaced. So what you could do is you can make the duck the size of say three circles. So just like that. And then you can move them multiple 
over and I can say, okay, I'm gonna have one circle spaced apart. So very easily here, you can see I've got now four ducks. It just took me a few seconds. And these four ducks now are perfectly spaced apart because they're at the start of one circle with one circle in between. There's also actual grid paper. There's this one here. I wouldn't use this as the actual design, but I can make this grid now as large or as small as I want in the background. So I can do the exact same thing. I'll get rid of my circles here. I'll put this grid right to the back. So I'm gonna right click it and go to back. And now I can just simply move it underneath and I can now move my ducks exactly how I want. I can make them, for example, about one square apart. Because they're all the exact same size, I can now space them as well. So we can see there we've got half of a square kind of in between each of them. I can then do Control A, That'll select everything, but it will also select the grid paper. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select the grid paper, that unselects it. So now I've got the four ducks selected. I can vertically center them, and now I can see that they're the exact same size. Grouping is really popular because if you're making a big array, like I can add one more here pretty easily with the Alt key. I'll then just remove the grid. I'll highlight everything, vertically center it, right click, group, and then just using the Alt key, I can just make an array and I can space them out similarly using a shape or using the grid lines. And within a minute, I can have a huge array of perfectly spaced items. So sometimes grouping and copying is a really nice little hack. And the grid lines I find are very helpful. There's a few different options. There's fat circles, there's some skinny circles here. And remember, by clicking on the actual item, the grid, you can change the color of it. So you can make it whatever color you like and simply use an item like a grid as a spacing tool. I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. I love using Kittle. There's so many different features inside of it. And I've got lots of tutorials on my channel. I'm gonna put a link to Kittle in the video description below. And just a heads up, it is an affiliate link. And that just means that if you click on the link and you do purchase the Kittle subscription, I would receive a small commission. Here's another video on how you can use the superpowers of Kittle in your print on demand journey.